What's up, y'all? AJ Simmons checking in for another video. Today, I got a pretty quick one for you guys today. So, I got a question from my guy, Rube Hogan, who's a member of the CBN Network. Uh, shout out to Rube. So, he basically asked me, you know, what would I do in a situation where you got a cheap customer who also wants to basically nag, and, and you get those, right? So, you get the ones who always want to complain, yet they ain't even really paying nothing, and they trying to cut costs, right? So, let's talk about how I would handle it. To me, it's really three options here. Either you could A, you know, keep going and just keep doing your best and try to get through it. Okay, that's 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 number one, and that's probably what most people do, just try to fight through it. B, you can fire, okay? Just let them go because you don't want to waste your time. You know what I mean? So I've done that. That's probably the way that I take a lot of times and took a lot of times in the past. I'll just go ahead and fire them before they could fire me and protect my reputation. I, I do my best while I'm there, but I'll approach them in a respectful manner and be like, look, you know, um, I don't think that this this combination or this pairing between us and you guys are, are the best. And I'm not sure if we can, um, you know, we'll be able to provide the level of service that you're looking for at the current rate that you are expecting to pay. So, therefore, I think it would be best for us both mutually for us to go ahead and discontinue, discontinue services. And uh, I will we'll help you with finding another company if you want, blah, blah, blah. So that's one thing that you could do. Now, the third thing that you could do is maybe play with the scope of work, okay? Maybe since they want to cut costs, maybe there's a way that you can kind of cut back the scope of work, okay? If you're going to cut price, then cut the scope of work to go with it, okay? Or if they want to keep the, the cost the same, but they feel like you're not delivering, you know what I mean? They feel like you're missing stuff. Well, maybe you need to have a sit down with them and discuss the current scope of work and make sure that both sides and both parties understand, uh, you know, clearly what's included within the scope of work because they might think that you're supposed to do, you know, something so much more detailed than what the scope of work actually calls for. And when I say scope of work for the newer people to my channel, uh, I'm talking about the, the cleaning schedule, okay? The things, the tasks that you're supposed to do uh, that you agreed upon in your service agreement, right? But, but I'm supposed to, you know, mop this many times uh, per week. I'm supposed to, you know, wipe the window glass, spot clean the entry glass, or am I supposed to squeegee it every time? All of that stuff should be documented inside your service agreement, right? Because there should be a scope of work section in your service agreement. And since I'm speaking on it, cheap plug, right? Calculated clean, okay? If you download the Calculated Clean app, you will see that when you do the proposal, if you use the proposal generator tool that we have in there, It'll have like different um, like tasks that you can tell them that it's included in your service, and you can put whether it's weekly, whether it's daily, whether it's monthly, whether it's biweekly, etc. Okay, so uh, you want to you know maybe have a meet with them and make sure that you discuss exactly to make sure that they know exactly what's what's required and what's not. All right, but if they think that you're supposed to you know over deliver, yet they're supposed to continue to underpay, then you know, maybe it's time for a change, whether it be a contract, the whole thing, just throw them away and let somebody else, you know, let that be somebody else's headache. Or whether it just be a simply tweaking the uh, current scope of work and making it conducive for both parties, okay? But that's really the only things to it. I can't lie to y'all. I used to always fire customers. If I, if I can tell that they were real nitpicky and I know that I'm already giving my best and they got a little stuff like... Don't get me wrong now, because I, I, we're not in the business of giving away money, okay? So don't think just because somebody complained, or you know, you're supposed to just give up and give in. Because uh, I'm telling you, I done got thousands and thousands and thousands of, you know, uh, critical feedback and bad, uh, you know, responses. You know what I mean? Complaints. Over time. But I learned from them. That's why I was able to become such a good cleaner and develop that what they call a cleaner's eye, okay? So now I know all the hot spots for the dust, like the, you know, dust in the top of the... Uh, you know, it's like a little silver railing part at the top of, um, like, restroom stalls. So most people miss that. You know what I mean? Dusting the, the vents. Dusting stuff like, um, you know, the back of computer monitors and printers and stuff like that. So uh, window ledges that some people miss a lot. Blinds. You know what I mean? All of the different things I develop over time simply because of complaints. So don't get turned off just so quick just because you get a complaint. Complaints are part of the business. As a matter of fact, 
you supposed to learn from them, okay? So don't automatically just get turned off just because you get some complaints. But as you grow into the business, you will be able to, you know, distinguish between a nitpicking customer and somebody who just cannot be satisfied versus a customer who really has a legitimate concern that you need to address, okay? So that, and another thing I always tell people too, when you get complaints, go and see what's going on, okay? Go out there and put your eyes on it because if you say you mopped and she says you didn't, Maybe you both need to look at it at the exact same time and figure out what was going on because maybe you did mop and somebody came in after you and tore it back up. You know, or maybe you did mop, but they need a machine scrub, okay? They need to run their auto scrub over it, okay? So it could be a number of different things, but the bottom line is communicate, okay? Communicate. Make sure that what you think is required is what they think is expected. As simple as that, all right? So, but again, every now and then you do got to fire those customers. And I don't never rec recommend necessarily just fighting through and pushing through and I'm going to just keep doing my best and hope they don't say nothing. No, let's come on. Be proactive about it. You know what I mean? Address the concerns and try to uh, keep the customer satisfied. So, that's pretty much all I got for y'all, man. This ain't going to be no long one. <laughs> all right? Ain't, ain't no long answer to this one, all right? So, cleanbusinessnetwork.com. If you need leads from us, check out our lead generation service. We can set appointments for you anywhere in the United States. All right? A lot of people ask me, can we do it in this camp, uh, city? Can you do it in this state? Anywhere in the country, okay? All 50 states, we can get you uh, leads. and uh, Well, really, they're not even leads. They're appointments, okay? So we can set you up with walk-through appointments to get in front of customers or interested prospects, rather, and uh, present your services to them and try to close the deal. Also, if you haven't started yet and you want to get started, check out our Cleaning Business Starter Kits, okay? Go to cleaningbusinessstarterkit.com. Check out how our Cleaning Business Starter Kits can help you, okay? So that's what I got for y'all. AJ Simmons. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm out. <laughs>